Opaline was an alicorn that just randomly came into the lives of the main five. Her existence was never documented in the previous era of ponies, or was it? I think I just solved the mystery of who Opaline really is. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What was I talking about? Oh, right. First things first. Let's talk about the yak in the room. Is Opaline the daughter of Cadence? If she is, then that means that Cadence would have never taught her daughter the power of love, or her daughter would have just given up on love altogether. Both options are very unlikely. So fine, let's say that Cadence vanished, or worse, died. That still leaves Fleurheart to grow up with her aunt, meaning she learned the importance of friendship. So unless Flurry met Cozy Glow at some point in the two traded notes, I don't think Opaline is Flurry Heart. But is she a nightmare version of Flurry Heart? Let's say we'll call her Flurry Tart. Well, it's a possibility, but that would bring up more problems and inconsistencies than any other theory. So it's a lot easier and makes a lot more sense for us to say that Opaline and Flurry Heart are two separate beings, which yeah, may actually raise some questions since there were only six known alicorns throughout equestrian history so far. Well, at least before Sunny made an appearance. But that brings me to my next point. Out of everything we've seen in equestrian lore, not once has it ever been mentioned how many alicorns were actually in or outside of Equestria. The only thing we actually know is that Flurry was the only known alicorn to be born in Equestria. Well, that and a pony can become an alicorn if they activate the dormant alicorn genes within their body. What can I say? I like that theory. But what does this mean for Opaline? Does it mean that there are other alicorns out there that we haven't heard of yet? And are some of them connected to Opaline being a flame alicorn? Well, my little pony, the answer is yes. It's like Sawtooth told me before. Opaline can't say that she wants to be the strongest flame alicorn if she's the only flame alicorn. And while it'd be easy to place her existence at the beginning of equestrian history, I don't think that's right. And the same thing goes for her being born between Twilight's era and Sunny's era. And a pony couldn't have developed a personality like Opaline in just an era where there was no magic. So let's dig a little deeper because it turns out we were told when Opaline existed. Remember back during Izzy's slumber party? Sunny told everyone a story about how the ponies of the past started to fight each other after an earth pony got hurt. So Twilight sealed away magic to stop the fight. But right after that story, Misty tells them a different version. One where Opaline was the most powerful alicorn there was, and Twilight grew jealous of that. So Twilight ended up stealing Opaline's magic and cloaked all of Equestria so Opaline couldn't find it. Now it may seem like there are two different stories, but what if I told you they're the same story, but being told from different perspectives? And when you add in what Discord was saying to all of the others, everything starts to fall into place and we can finally piece together Opaline's past. So without further ado, here's the full story of Opaline. Long before Twilight became an alicorn, there was another young unicorn named Opaline that lived in Equestria. Opaline, being a young filly, would often fantasize about becoming an alicorn. She would spend her days admiring the works of Celestia. And although she had been born into a royal family, she believed that true royalty was only held by alicorns. So as the years went on, she would study ways to become an alicorn through magic. Eventually, her city would be attacked and it would be up to her to protect it. Due to her research in magic, she had discovered a new type of magic. A magic that allowed her to absorb the fire of dragons to enhance her own magical abilities. This new magic attracted the attention of Celestia. So as soon as Opaline cast that spell and used that magic, she was transported to the celestial dimension where everything that ever happened to her flashed before her eyes. Celestia stood before her and gave her a choice to follow her as her new student or be returned to her old life. But for Opaline, the choice was already made. She chose Celestia and from her back, sprouted wings. Years later, Celestia started to notice that Opaline had a hidden darkness inside of her. 
This darkness would frighten Celestia to the point where she would send Opaline away while she took another student. Years later, Opaline would hear about Twilight Sparkle being Celestia's newest pupil, and this would infuriate her. She would wonder why she wasn't good enough and why Celestia had abandoned her. And as the years continued, she would see what Twilight was capable of with her friends until the day that Twilight was finally crowned the Princess of Equestria. With this, Opaline would grow jealous of Twilight, wondering why she wasn't the one chosen, until the incident happened in Ponyville, causing magic to go awry and for Twilight to be forced to strip Equestria of all of its magic. As soon as Opaline realized what had happened, she believed Twilight to have taken her magic due to jealousy, so she searched for Twilight. But unbeknownst to her, Twilight had already casted a cloaking spell around Equestria, leaving Opaline without her magic or her subjects. Angered by this, Opaline sought to claim her rightful place as the proper ruler of Equestria and vowed revenge on all those that stood before her. Then she took in Misty and the rest is history. To be honest, I really like this version of Opaline's past. It tells so much more about her. And I'm really looking forward to see where the new generation of ponies will lead. Anyway, tell me what you think Opaline's past would be. And I'm Windstriker Brony, flying off until next time. Hoof to heart. I'm really sorry at how long this video took to make, but I really like this new editing style. However, it does mean that videos are going to take a bit longer for me to make. Anyway, if you want to talk some more about My Little Pony, you should definitely check out the Nameless Ones Discord channel. Oh, and thanks for watching, and a special thanks to all of my patrons, especially my investigator tier patrons, Skarmex and Trailblazer. You're all really amazing. And if you want to support me too, check out my newly improved Patreon page down below. And a special shout out to my boyfriend Cameo Shadowness. I'm not really good with this kind of stuff, and I really like being with you, and you make me really happy. Um, you mean a lot to me and you're amazing and weird. And I really like that about you. I like, I like you for who you are. And thank you for everything. And, uh, ooh, man, I'm really not good at this. And yeah, this is entirely unscripted, this part anyway. And thank you for being with me. Hope to heart, everyone.